Now, let's consider the event, senators, that took place last year in Michigan, where President Trump demonstrated his willingness and his ability to incite violence against government officials who he thought were getting in his way. When responding to extremist plots in Michigan, Trump showed he knew how to use the power of a mob to advance his political objectives. Beginning in March, Trump leveled attacks on Michigan, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer for the coronavirus policies in her state. On March 17th, the day after Governor Whitmer pushed the federal government to better support the states on COVID-19, Trump criticized her handling of the pandemic, tweeting, failing Michigan governor must work harder and be much more proactive. We are pushing her to get the job done. I stand with Michigan. On March 27th, he added, I love Michigan. One of the reasons we're doing such a great job for them during this horrible pandemic, yet your governor, Gretchen Half-Whitmer, is way in over her head. She doesn't have a clue, likes blaming everyone for her own ineptitude. Hashtag MAGA. By April, Trump's rhetorical attacks and name calling turned to calls for mass mobilization of his supporters. This was a sign of things to come. On April 17th, 2020, he tweeted, quote, liberate Michigan. Not even two weeks later, on April 30th, his supporters marched on the Michigan State Capitol in Lansing. They stormed the building. Trump's marching orders were followed by aggressive action on the ground. We have a right. Let us in. As the video shows, these militant protesters showed up ready to take a violent stand. They came armed and tightly packed themselves into the building with no regard, of course, for social distancing. This Trump-inspired mob may indeed look familiar to you. Confederate battle flags, MAGA hats, weapons, camo army gear, just like the insurrectionists who showed up and invaded this chamber on January 6th. The siege of the Michigan State House was effectively a state-level dress rehearsal for the siege of the U.S. Capitol that Trump incited on January 6th. It was a preview of the coming insurrection. President Trump's response to these two events was strikingly similar. Following the armed siege in Lansing, President Trump refused to condemn the attacks on the Michigan Capitol, or denounced the violent lawbreakers. Instead, he did just the opposite. He upheld the righteousness of his violent followers' cause, and he put pressure on the victim of the attack to listen to his supporters. The day after the mob attack in Lansing, Trump told Governor Whitmer to negotiate with the extremists, tweeting that the governor should just, quote, give a little to the violent men who had stormed the Capitol, threatening not only the stability of the Michigan government, but her own life. As you can see, he tweeted, the governor of Michigan should give a little and put out the fire. These are very good people, but they are angry. They want their lives back again safely. See them, talk to them, make a deal. The president says heavily armed extremists carrying Confederate battle flags and pushing past police to overtake the Michigan State House chamber are very good people and just negotiate with them. It's clear he doesn't think that they're at fault in any way at all. But April 30th wasn't the only time Trump supporters stormed Michigan Capitol. Emboldened by his praise and his encouragement and support, they escalated again. Governor Whitmer refused to capitulate to the president's demand to negotiate with them. Two weeks later, on May 14th, Trump's mob again stormed the state capitol. This time, as you can see here, one man brought a doll with a noose around the neck, 
foreshadowing the appearance of the large gallows erected outside of this building, downstairs from here on January 6th, as the crowd chanted, and I still can hear the words ringing in my ear, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence, hang Mike Pence. Over the coming months, even after a crowd threatening Governor Whitmer stormed the Capitol, Trump continued to assail her in public. At a rally in Michigan on September 10th, Trump whipped up the crowd against Governor Whitmer, saying, quote, she doesn't have a clue about reopening her own state's economy. The crowd cheered. Then, on October 8th, the precise consequences of the president's incitement to violence were revealed to the whole world. Look at this. Thirteen men were arrested by the FBI for plotting to storm the Michigan State Capitol building, launch a civil war, kidnap Governor Whitmer, transport her to Wisconsin, and then try and execute her. This was an assassination conspiracy, a con kidnapping conspiracy. Look at the language that they used. In the charging document, the FBI reported that one of the conspirators said he needed, quote, 200 men to storm the Capitol building and take political hostages, including the governor. The suspect called it a snatch and grab man, grab the effing governor. One of those men has already pled guilty to this conspiracy. The plot was well organized, just like the one that was coming on January the 6th. The men in Michigan even considered building Molotov cocktails to disarm police vehicles and attempted to construct their own IEDs, something that actually happened here on January 6th. Police authorities arrested extremists who had weapons and materials to build explosive devices, including one man found with an assault rifle and enough materials to make 11 Molotov cocktails. On September 17, 2020, one of the Michigan conspiracies posted, when the time comes, there will be no need to strike fear through presence. The fear will be manifested through bullets. And what did Donald Trump do as president of the United States to defend one of our nation's governors against a plotted kidnapping by violent insurrectionists? Did he publicly condemn violent domestic extremists who hoped and planned to launch a civil war in America? No, not at all. He further inflamed them by continuing to attack the governor who was the object of their hatred in this kidnapping conspiracy. The very night this conspiracy became public and that Governor Whitmer learned that there were 13 men who were planning to kidnap and likely kill her, Trump did not condemn the violence. He did not criticize the extremists. He didn't even check on Governor Whitmer's safety. He chose to vilify Governor Whitmer again, and then amazingly took credit for foiling the plot against her, demanding her gratitude. And then he quickly, of course, changed the subject to Antifa. He tweeted, Governor Whitmer has done a terrible job. He demanded that she thank him for the law enforcement operation that had foiled the kidnapping conspiracy that had been encouraged by his rhetoric. On October 17th, a little over a week after these people were arrested for preparing to kidnap Gretchen Whitmer, Trump riled up a boisterous crowd in Muskegon with more slashing personal attacks on Whitmer, driving the crowd to chant, lock her up, lock her up. He had now seen that some of his followers were prepared to engage in criminal violence with orchestrated attacks, deadly weapons, and willing bodies to storm a state capitol building and to attack his perceived political enemies. And so as the crowd chanted, lock her up, he pivoted to his next goal. He told them they couldn't trust the governor to administer fair elections in Michigan. He used a crowd that he knew would readily engage in violence to prepare his followers for his next and, of course, his paramount political objective, claiming the election was stolen and inciting insurrectionary action. Hey, NBC News viewers, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down here and click on any of the videos over here to watch the latest interviews, show highlights, and digital exclusives. Thanks for watching.